Well, hello everybody and Merry Christmas. Thanks for tuning in with us today. And whether it's chaos at your house or whether it's really quiet, we're glad that you're here with us. We hope your day's going well, you've had a good day, and that you've had a good season so far. Now, I'm not sure if you were here with us yesterday for our Christmas Eve services at all, but we, what we were trying to do is attempt to put a bow on our theme for the season, which was a thrill of hope. If you were there, you'll remember that the phrase comes from the beautiful Christmas carol, O Holy Night. That was written in 1847, actually. If you weren't there and you haven't caught up to what we've been trying to do this season, here's a brief reminder of some of the verses in that carol. It says this, O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. What an amazing picture that paints for us when you stop and think about it. The whole world lays in sin and error, and the word pining actually means suffering. And then the Savior appears, and there's this thrill inside, an excitement inside that overshadows everything else. In this song, it's, it's about the Savior's birth and a new day after a long time of waiting in darkness with no hope. And so as I thought about that song written again in 1847, it made me start digging into some of the words of other classics and I realized very quickly that things have changed in the songs that we sing about Christmas. I might be old, but my heart's not old, and I enjoy some of the modern classics just like you. But when I started to actually look at them, I realized something different between the writings of the 1700s and up to the 2000s. It's like we turned a corner or, or changed direction or lost our way. We started singing about different things in relation to Christmas. And again, I wanna say I'm not against trees and presents and holiday cheer, we do all of that. In fact, I have a whole corner of my garage that's designated just for Christmas decorations. But it was pretty glaring to me you know, when I first started down this road, how far we've shifted from what we used to sing about. You know, there's a huge stack of modern day Christmas classics that you all know, like Deck the Halls and Frosty the Snowman, Jingle Bells and Silver Bells, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year and Sleigh Ride, Holly Jolly Christmas and Baby It's Cold Outside, right? And the list goes on and on. And then, of course, the top two sellers of all time, Bing Crosby's White Christmas and Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas. Now, White Christmas is a sweet song about snow and sleigh bells and, and beautiful settings, right? It, it goes like this. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to know, where the treetops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. And then he goes on to say, may all your days be merry and bright and may all your Christmases be white. That was the sentiment in 1942. And then All I Want for Christmas came out 52 years later in 1994. And this song has a little bit of a different sentiment. You know this one also, it goes like this. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing I need I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know, make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. All I want for Christmas is you, baby. And that's basically the sentiment of that song. Lots of eyes and mys in that one. And so I'm gonna say it one more time because I feel like I'm being a Scrooge, 
but I don't mean to be. I don't want to be, and I'm not, really. Bing Crosby's song may bring some very nice thoughts and a bit of warmth and well-wishing towards others, but it doesn't bring hope, not real lasting hope, not life-changing hope. And I'm pretty sure I can say there's even less life-changing hope in Mariah's song, if there's any at all, it is completely centered on her personal desires. It shows you how far we have come just in 50 years. And most of the other ones I mentioned earlier are a lot the same way. And that all leads me to a couple of questions. What was it that the writers of the songs 200 or 250 years ago knew about that we've forgotten about? What was it that those writers knew that, that actually did bring a thrill of hope a, a, that's long lasting that would go on? I mean, do, do we remember what the Messiah was supposed to do? The true meaning of Christmas and why the Savior came? One of my favorite Christmas verses that maybe not be considered a Christmas verse at all is found in Isaiah 61, where it talks about the, the reason why the Messiah or Jesus would come at all. And it's as if the Messiah was standing there telling us, here is why he's coming. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Right? Bring good news to the afflicted, right? Bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives freedom to prisoners and proclaim the favorable year of the Lord? That sounds like things that will truly bring a thrill of hope and a long lasting hope. So what I wanna do for the next few minutes really is just look at an assortment of Christmas songs that you'll all know and maybe bring us back to what they were writing about. And I'm gonna read them, not try to recite them and I definitely won't try to sing them for you so that you will you'll won't miss the words. Let's start by finishing off the verses of O Holy Night. It goes on to say this, In lowly manger, in all our trials, born to be our friend, he knows our need, to our weakness no stranger. Behold your King. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave, the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppressions shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, oh praise his name forever. His power and glory forevermore. Proclaim his power and glory evermore. Proclaim. That sounds just like Isaiah 61 to me. Or how about God rest ye merry gentlemen from 1833? And just to give you an idea of what 1833 was about, it's about 50 years before there was ever an automobile at all. So think about it that way, what the world was like. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. O tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Now the Lord sings praises, now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas doth bring redeeming grace. Or what about Hark the Herald Angels Sing from 1739? Hark the Herald Angels Sing, glory to the newborn King. 
peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Christ the everlasting Lord, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel, or God with us. Born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Risen with healing in his wings, light and life to all he brings. Hail the son of righteousness. Hail the heaven born prince of peace. And then he goes on at the end to say, Adam's likeness now efface, which means to erase and stamp thine image in its place. And then there's Silent Night from 1818. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosts saying hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born. With the angels let us sing hallelujah to our King. Christ the Savior is here. Jesus the Savior is here. Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Just a couple more. And little town of Bethlehem, 1865. That's just a few years before electric lights and telephones. Not cell phones, telephones. Yet in the dark street shineth, which explains that verse, right? There was no electricity. Yet in the dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, Dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the glad tidings tell. The great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. Again, God with us. And joy to the world, 1719, almost 60 years before the founding of America. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king, let every heart prepare him room. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns, joy to the world with truth and grace, the glories of his righteousness and the wonders of his love. No more will sin and sorrow grow or thorns infest the ground. He'll come and make the blessings flow. He rules the world with truth and grace. Rejoice, rejoice in the most high, like stars that glitter in the sky. And ever worship God. And ever worship God. And lastly, Handel's Messiah from 1741. Truth is, I can't do justice to Handel's Messiah because it's really just verse after verse after verse of biblical truth put to, to, put to music with the amazing choruses of hallelujahs, right? For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth and he shall reign forever and ever, King of kings forever and ever and Lord of lords forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Did you hear the difference in those songs? There's joy, there's hope, there's forgiveness of sins, there's angels singing, there's victory over Satan, there's new life and perspective. There's true praise for the Messiah. It's all about him. They were all writing 
about the greatness of our God. They are all about something so much bigger than the modern classics seem to, to capture. You know, it was true now and it was true then. Our world is upside down. Our world is broken, but somewhere along the way, we, we've turned a corner. We've, we lost our way, as I said, we've changed direction. However you want to say it, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that we can still actually know we need to actually go back and remember why we sing to begin with. It's because we have a savior, though. The world has a savior and he has done great things and he is still doing great things and he will forever do great things. That's why we sing. And that phrase, why we sing, leads me to a story that I want to close with today. Back in November, around Thanksgiving, my wife Cindy and I had the privilege to travel to Austin to hear Kurt Franklin and Maverick City and the Kingdom Tour. And it was pretty awesome, I'll tell you. And we were having a good old time, and some might say we went to church that night. <laughs> and then Kirk began to play a little melody, and the melody was his song entitled, Why We Sing. And I want to share that with you because, as you can tell, during that song, I had one of those moments, one of those special moments, and the song went like this. It said, Someone asked the question, why do we sing? When we lift our hands to Jesus, what do we really mean? And someone may be wondering, when we sing our song, at times we may be crying and nothing's even wrong. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. That's the reason why I sing. Glory, hallelujah, you're the reason why I sing. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You're the reason why I sing. You're my melody at midnight, Jesus. You're my song in my storm, Jesus. You're the healing in my heart, Jesus. You're the reason why you're the reason why I sing. Glory, hallelujah, for the rest of my life, Jesus, you'll be the reason why I sing. And that moment I had in the midst of that song was the realization that the only reason I sing at all about anything, the only reason I have a song in my heart at all is because of what Jesus has done in my life. And that filled me with such joy and a genuine thrill of hope. And so our hope in the midst of your day today is that just for a few minutes, we all stopped and we all were reminded in a fresh new way of why we sing this season. It's because Jesus came. And once again, let me remind you why he came. He came to bring good news to the afflicted. He came to bind up the brokenhearted. He came to proclaim liberty to the captives. He came to bring freedom to prisoners and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And those are truly hope-filled reasons to sing. And so having said all that, we at Stonegate Fellowship wish you all a wonderful, hope-filled Christmas day. We also wish you a wonderful, hope-filled new year to come. And that every day we might be reminded in some way, somehow, about the reason that we sing. And that reason is Jesus. So may God our Father richly bless you and your family and your day and the year to come as we praise him for what he's done. Merry Christmas to you all.